Glenn and I met like three months ago and Glenn finally accepted me on Facebook. Since finally. You, finally. Since you added me, what has happened? How has, what, what have you experienced? I would say uh, previously I wasn't really all that interested in Facebook. You know, you do an update once in a while for friends. And now since meeting you on Facebook and meeting your followers on Facebook, I have chatted and exchanged photos and ideas with rabbis, with clerics, with people from all over the world. And it's been very, very interesting. I find myself uh, in discussions that I would never have had before. It's really a, been a, a very interesting and eye-opening experience. Uh, I'm, the only downside is I spend a lot more time on Facebook now than I did before, but uh, it's been much more rewarding. I am actually uh, excited about using Facebook now. Uh, before it was more <clears throat> very close group of friends and we just exchanged some ideas. Now it's getting, exchanging ideas with everybody pretty much around the world. It's uh, a lot of fun and I'm very happy uh, to have met these people. There's some extraordinary people that you can communicate with uh, ideas and it's amazing what some people will post. The videos, the photos are all very extraordinary. When you met me, you asked about Taliban and Kashmir and the armies and Normally, you don't have opportunities to ask those questions to normal Americans. That's why you asked me, because I'm a brown guy. Oh, right, I'm right. from Pakistan, right? And you don't meet many people who would be willing to talk about it. Sure. Uh, how, since then, I mean, that's the reason you actually, you know, we had a long talk and then you opened up. And how has it impacted? Did it help in any way, those, those conversations? Did, did it help you understand better? Oh, no doubt. Uh, just looking at the, the posts from a lot of your followers in Pakistan, um, <clears throat> it's given me a window into their lives that I wouldn't have had before. And even discussing my like, particular topic with you, the first time we met was, was uh, I think, illuminating. <clears throat> but just to get a much more feel of the day-to-day -day, um, pictures and updates that the Pakistanis have, has been uh, extraordinary. Some, some, almost all the stereotypes have been pretty much blown away, you know. <laughs> but it depends on the individual, right? There are people there that are like, you know, they hate India. And it's like, well, you know, you, know, you don't want to necessarily get into a big argument about that on Facebook. But it's interesting to, to hear their viewpoints. And I think it is important for people who are uh, dealing with strangers essentially on Facebook that you can't take offense you know you have to understand that people are going to have different ideas they're going to post different um, concepts that you may often disagree with but that's their right and it's good to know what people think about it. If, they're ta if they're telling you the truth if they're telling you how they honestly feel that's uh, a benefit it's, it's undoubtedly a benefit even if it's totally different than what you think getting their honest opinion that's a valid uh, data point so when you met me before that what was your opinion about what kind of people live in Pakistan and what's your general opinion you know stereotype and now has it changed and what has it become now um, you know I guess my, my stereotype might have been that uh, you know it's a very poor country with a lot of um, you know maybe not well-educated people or not, not that they weren't industrious but they didn't really have a, a, a much of an industrial base there to, to build on and since that time it's fun to see the, the computer industry there the communication people um, I, I think you know probably before I thought everybody went to school in madrasas <laughs> you know because that's what you see on TV here you know so uh, it, was, it was great to see um, the level of education and also just the level of interest that they have in people outside their country. You know, the, the ability to, to communicate with them, exchange ideas with them, and uh, actually see a response and, a, and an acceptance of some of the ideas that we put forth, uh, or not that I put forth, was, was very uh, kind of surprising. I thought they would have been more uh, closed-minded.
I guess, is the image that I would have had previously. Do you consider yourself a science person? Uh, you want facts, you want proof of uh, many things. Whereas most people in Pakistan are religious. Right. Um, did you meet any people who were more interested in science? like, Or like uh, they were all, all religious? Well, I, I, I would say probably still the, the vast majority of the people that I met through you that were in Pakistan were, were still highly religious. And um, um, that, even though that was unexpected from me, I would say that uh, probably their tolerance was more than I thought. That, yeah, they, they consider themselves Muslims, but they're not really They're you know, not coming worried. after you. Yeah, they're not worried about me um, posting, you know, atheist views and stuff like that. They were like, yeah, okay, well, that's Quinn. So, you know, they wouldn't take offense at it. And there were some that uh, were quite open to that as well. I don't think, I didn't change their minds. They, they probably already atheists to begin with. But, um, yeah, it was much less... Uh, um, regimented or, or orthodox than I would have thought and the interaction there was, was very illuminating even meeting you was illuminating in that regard right and to see your post with the Yamakan and stuff like that was just you know that was uh, really uh, made me very happy that people are open to that kind of you know hey give and take it's like it doesn't have to be so um, serious and um, uh, you know, deadly and stuff like that, you know. Hopefully that idea, that type of idea will spread. What is your message to other Americans after this experience? What should they try to, should they find 15 minutes a month, an hour, a day, a week, a year, a lifetime to experience what you did, to change their views from Fox or anything well, else? you know, I've always thought that inevitably evolution works and as the world grows smaller and people communicate more, that we evolve faster. So the more ideas that can be shared more openly between more people, then that's good for everybody. And it's almost, as long as they're heartfelt and honestly um, meant and intentionally, then there's almost no bad that can come out of that in, in, the, in the big picture. Individual exchanges may be bad, long term it's definitely for the good if I talk to other Americans I'd say yeah you may end up getting offended that's probably your problem and you know you, you need to look at why that would happen but uh, the only downside that I could possibly see for anybody would, would be that they're spending too much time <laughs> at their computer you know you know you should go spend time with your children or you know your community or whatever but if you want to spend time in the computer they're tired people. Talking to people. your friends is some of the most interesting way to do it, let me tell you. Much better than, uh, you know, watching, watching TV. TV or, you know, shopping or whatever. No, go to Facebook, <laughs> talk to Rehan's friends, and you'll, you'll, that's the best time you can spend on your computer. That's awesome. One of the friends suggested today that telecom industry controls majority of the world's communication, right? So it's 6,000 people in this conference literally control majority, 99% of the world's communication. What can this community do to help terrorism and poverty? The ITW community? No, just, just the telecom the community. The telecom community. Okay. I mean, you are, a, you are a big company when it comes to giving access to communication. You're making it cheaper for the planet. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you're doing your part, but what else do you think is there possibility? Because I don't consider that everybody in this conference consider themselves as a peacemaker. But they are making a lot of peace. They are making a lot of power to go away. Just because, just by doing what they're doing. Is there anything they can focus on, like, uh, just, to, just to sort of bridge things? Yeah, you know, the, the telecom industry right now, as you may know, is under a lot of price pressure. You know, it's very hard to make a profit for many of these customers, and that's why they come to a conference like this. But enabling cheaper communication is a very valuable thing. It's almost something that we take for granted, especially in the U.S. You know, nobody even thinks about what it costs to call somebody or video and somebody so or Facebook somebody and that idea has to propagate right and I think the carriers are probably doing their part 
the people that are not yet really doing their part are the people that probably have a harder job, and that's the local loop problem. You know, how do I get 10 megabits of bandwidth out to uh, somebody on their cell phone, you know, in uh, a cafe in Karachi? You know, that's the type of uh, problem that we need to solve, and the cellular companies are, are doing that pretty well, but I think they're still not, you know, they're not pricing it so people can really use it well. Uh, my, as, maybe it's Wi-Fi that's really the solution. You know, if all the little in, mom and pa uh, cafes and restaurants and stuff put up Wi-Fi for their customers, that would be, I think, a great thing. Uh, then you don't have to pay your cellular company or your ISP for that. You just uh, log on to Wi-Fi and you can chat or talk or video conference. I, mean, I had a video conference with my wife in Croatia today. Ten minutes didn't cost a penny. So, you know, that that really needs to be pushed out on a global basis in Africa and Afghanistan and Pakistan and India. And at that point, then you'll start to see some serious changes. And I think it's a big, a big step, evolutionarily speaking. It will shrink the world a little bit and probably a lot, hopefully a lot. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> Thank you for your wisdom. Very nice.